Lord, he's the best one foot dunker ever. Man, sure, look any up. any league, league, any country, best dunker ever. Kalou is the most incredible dunker I've ever seen in all of my life. That's crazy because when you're down the, down the court, just near him, you think he's flying. This guy is flying. Obviously, Gianni's like the best dunker in the world. Yeah, I jump I've ever seen. People this high can't dunk like that. Hell no. <laughs> I really can't do his dunks. I don't think anybody can do He may be arguably the best dunker for some people, but I'm telling you, like for me, he is the best dunker out right now. This is the story of a man who will touch the sky. <laughs> Kadour Ziani's story begins in France, where he grew up in a rough background. Through hard work and perseverance, Ziani worked his way onto Slam Nation at the age of 22. It was with Slam Nation Ziani first gained international exposure. At only 5 feet 11 inches tall, Ziani shocked the world with his trademark 360s and double windmills. The one I've first seen it. I couldn't even breathe or nothing. We see him do the double windmill, and like I seriously like couldn't breathe for like an hour. Is that even possible? Like I was trying to imagine in my head, and then I saw I was like, "Holy crap! He actually did it!" I was like, "Are you kidding me? He just did a double windmill." Ironically, Ziani's most shocking feat is not a dunk, but a maneuver he calls kicking the rim. I, I, there's really not words to describe it. I mean, I've never seen it before. I mean, a guy kicked the rim. I mean, it's, the guy's foot was ten feet in the air. No. It's not often you see an adult jump and karate kick a basketball <laughs> out of the rim. That's something that you, you think like, oh, nobody can do that. It's the type of stuff you used to see on like NBA Jam back in 98, you know what I'm saying? He's on fire. <laughs> The kick the rim as it stands is an unofficial world record, but Ziani is more than a dunker, he's an all-around athlete. He set the French national record in the high jump by clearing 7 foot 3. Unfortunately, at age 26, he began suffering knee pains which forced him to leave Slam Nation, but he stayed in shape as he was a professional soccer goalkeeper. But two years later, the pain in his knees would disappear, so Ziani rejoined Slam Nation to continue what he loved doing most, dunking. As the years progressed, Ziani displayed a remarkable resiliency towards aging. By age 32, he remained a remarkable dunker, though he was unable to make some of the dunks from his younger days, including the double windmill. Oh! People from all over the world, including his peers, thought Ziani was nearing his dunking conclusion. So at 32, Ziani joined Flying 101 to show the world he could still fly. People think, oh, Kadu is finished, Kadu is... What, what, what is the problem? If I'm finished, I want to dunk, I want to fly. I never let the people say to me, oh, you can, you can, you can. Stop, ah! I give all my body to the science, uh, to the science of dunk. I'm ready to, to lose my, my life when I dunk. Like when I make 360 over people, I accept it to, to death. To, to, to die. I think just by meeting Kador, like in person, I think he will duck till like the day he dies. <laughs> Nothing will make that guy stop. Every dunk, every dunk is um, incredible for me. Like this is incredible for me. I'm on the air one or two seconds. I imagine like a revenge against the world and uh, I imagine I can fly. Sensation is uh, like freedom, you know, you like bird. My dunk is my liberty. My dunk is my uh, uh, barometer of my life, you know. When I want to, when I feel bad, I say, okay, I have my dunk. He dunks with holding nothing back. He does not care about his landing, which 
a lot of times he'll end up getting injured because of it, but he does not care about his landing. Life is very important, and when I don't, I'm very, very happy to be alive. It's not anger, it's, ah, I'm alive. I'm so proud to, to make uh, a dunk. I'm proud to be alive, and I make it, you know, and life waits about me like a clock. That's why, you know, I say, yes, I do it, I'm ready to die. And when I dunk, I'm ready to die. Me, I'm on the middle of misery and glory. I live on a poor background all my life. When the people don't see me dunking, they don't give me nothing. When, it, when I dunk, they give me everything, hope. Oh. Ziani's poverty would be the main influence on his lifestyle. Instead of engaging in crime, Ziani turned his energies toward becoming the ultimate athlete. But because basketball wasn't very popular in France, Ziani didn't have courts to train on. But despite that, Ziani remained incredibly explosive for his age, and the question that was on everybody's mind was, how does he do it? <laughs> Ziani's answer was simple, training. Ziani focused his training on three different elements, balance, strength, and flexibility. Just by his training method, you can tell that like he has like what uh, you need to be a really really good one-legged jumper, which is like perfect balance, like immense strength, like individual off each individual leg, like incredible like core strength. Me, I'm Kado. I'm not God. I'm human being. To cross the limit, you have to know your body perfectly. You have to know your limit. To know your limit, you have to to walk, walk, walk. And um, for me, the talent do doesn't exist. The talent is uh, to use the time. You are free to be ordinary or to have talent. Ten years after, you have the talent because to have the talent, you have to be old. I mean, spend the time. If you walk, every everything is possible. He looks like a ninja in half of his training videos. I mean, that's pretty crazy knowing that you know, that stuff actually works. I mean, a lot of stuff little kids shouldn't be watching because they'll probably be trying it, but he goes all out in the training technique. The man really dedicates himself to dunk and stretching is a key thing for him. I'm, I'm stretched every day, maybe four hours by day. I use elastic energy. The reflection, elastic reflection is uh, a big, big energy. You don't have to be, to have a big muscle. Stretching is not a big effort. You know, it's not like you make a laps on. Uh, you know, it's it's not so difficult. But no, no, uh, nobody wants to do it. You know why? Kador, it's like my. It's like the complete opposite of Myri. Myri is just like tearing the muscle. It builds back up. A lot of strength training. Whereas Kador, you have like stretching. It's just what your body does. It's therapy. You know. Stretching is your doctor. He says that his energy comes from elasticity, and he's always working on that, randomly kicking over his head and things like that. When I see him kick himself in the shoulder, I realize that if you want to jump higher and increase your vertical, you have to be flexible. And so we started, all of us started stretching. It works, so you know what I'm saying? I might start doing it myself. <laughs> Kador is so strong. He's so small, but yeah, he's so strong. He's like 5'11", probably, I don't know, 140 pounds maybe. He, he's really tiny. I think he wears a size 9 shoe. But he, he dunks with so much power. He went up and he missed He missed the dunk, but he threw the ball down so hard off the back of the rim. It, it hit the ceiling with so much force. And the ceiling was probably 60 feet at least. I get that, I get that. Do you want to know how I work? Hard work. Kadora's training methods are uh, very highly unethical. And uh, I don't know if anybody else in the world can pull it off except for Kadora. But uh, then, then again, I mean, that's the reason that there's no other person in the world that can jump it like Kadora. Doing crunches like halfway off a bridge. Wait, who who does that? That's just crazy. Man, it's just insane, man. I was just like, what is this guy thinking? I mean, it obviously works, and I mean that's great. I'm all for it. I mean, I wouldn't do that. Watching Kadur train is like watching somebody uh, wear those Shaolin tapes. It was just uh, amazing the things he would do, and and. He'd pick up um, a stick, he would uh, use it as a, a weapon against an imaginary enemy, but he would go through all the motions. He's never had martial arts training, he taught himself. I try to, to, to use my imagination like a gift, like a door open to a lot of things. I mean, my eyes can see a lot of 
a lot of things. I try to use my body a different way, and I I don't know what I'm do what I, what am I doing, but I try. I try. Unfortunately for Ziani, only a few weeks before he was supposed to come to America, he suffered a freak injury while performing a dunk. Ziani wondered if he would ever be able to dunk again. Ziani would change after the injury. Arriving in America, his passion for dunking would reappear. Once he dunked, he realized, no, I've still got it. And from that time on, he figured that he'll be able to do it. He's 33 years old. He figures he'll be able to dunk until he's 50 or 60 years old. With his daily regimen, I have no doubt that that's going to be the case. But Ziani was unable to dunk at the level he had been a few months earlier. But Ziani wanted to prove his philosophy. He maintained that through his values he would dunk better in a few months than he had in his Slam Nation days. Ziani would spend very little time dunking, instead training his body in other ways. For an art form, Kadur did not spend much time practicing dunking. He didn't spend that much time in the gym because he found other areas where he could stretch his body and work on his gymnastics ability. And if he had a choice between gym equipment and a basketball hoop, he would spend time with the gym equipment. Here in America, if you want cook, you cook. If you don't want cook, you don't cook. Though not necessarily religious, Ziani observed Ramadan, an Islamic practice that involved a month-long discipline of the body. In this practice, one is not allowed to eat or drink anything from sunrise to sunset. By this time, Ziani's ability had begun to come back. The hard work and dedication was paying off. But with no food and water, Ziani found dunking and training to be a painful burden on his body. But year after year, Ziani would persevere by integrating humor into his lifestyle. Ziani became notorious for his funny personality, using his animal-like instincts while imitating one of his heroes, Charlie Chaplin. Yes, my name is Kadur, a.k.a. Charlie. Kadoor is like a big kid. Anytime there's a, a girl around or some kid, little kid, I mean, he always wants to get that person to look at him. Notice him. He'd walk up to some random person and be like, close your eyes. Close my eyes. I make sure some take bumble. Nice to meet you, sir. He, he'd always try to strive for extra attention from people. Just by doing, whether it's like doing strange stuff in front of him, just doing it. He'd do anything for attention. Yeah! <laughs> Hey man, everybody! It's time to revolution! Ziani's comeback took a dramatic leap. While dunking with Mr. Biz, he had to pull out all his stops just to keep pace. It's very uh, uh, rare. Mm -hmm. to see someone tall like him and with a lot of ability of rotation. Mr. Biz impressed me, world-class dunker. When, when he's on the court, he always likes to try to get attention. He always tries to one-up the other dunker that's there. He, wants, he doesn't want to just be the best out there with nobody else doing anything yeah. good. He wants you to do your best and then he wants to do his best. He knows that 99% percent of the time his best is going to be better than your best. But he couldn't out dunk Mr. Biz. He tried to bring out all his tricks. He tried to bring out the double windmill. I mean, he was just trying anything he could to try to get that attention. One thing that Kador did that I will never forget is he jumped up, pulled himself on top of the hoop, and then lowered himself through the hoop. And for him, after that was like a born-again experience. From that moment on, he just went crazy with the dunks that he was performing. Ziani's rebirth would be the start of a new personality he called Zianimo. From then on, nothing was out of reach. Zianimo is Kadur's alter ego, basically. Him acting like an animal. And he, stu he studied a lot of different animals. He studied cats for a while, and he was like, the balance and the quickness of cats and the flexibility. Cats know how to jump, so he modified his own behavior so that he would emulate a cat. He almost just slinks around like a cat and it's the way you walk, to the way you stretch, to what you do, every step you take goes into slam dunking because it's not an easy thing to do. I present you 
Kaduro, the animal. Yes, the man is not man, he's animal. It didn't matter <laughs> where we went. He'd always be climbing trees. Some people see these trees like, uh, oh, what is it? You know? Me, I see these trees like this. And the animal, top on the trees. Man is not a man, he's an animal. His off the court antics, like just the way he lives and the things that he does during his everyday life, are almost more bizarre than what he does when he does. I dunk with my foot! He's the craziest. The craziest. Not, not only dunker, dunker, he's the craziest person I've ever met. Mm -hmm. You know, the people, the people are afraid to fall on the floor. But you know, I'm a goalkeeper. <laughs> and I used to fall on the floor. At first, I was very scared. You know, oh, I never want to, be, to, to fall on the floor. After I say, oh, that's why I, I like the nature, I like the animal. They are, they are not shy to, to fall on the floor. My family live here. <laughs> no? Nothing is perverse. Flying 101 held its first private mini show. Six dunkers were there that day. John He, Marshall Moses, David Thacker, Mike Hashem, Janelle Carter, and Kadur Ziani. The level of dunking was extremely high, but on this day, Ziani commanded all the attention. On October 14th, well, that was the middle of Ramadan for him. He did not have anything to eat or anything to drink. Uh, his energy levels were just wiped out, and at the end of the day, he felt like he was dying. And that was crazy, because Dude, if you, if you he's watch, he's so small. Yeah, the way he has, he's not like a big dude. You gotta think he's on like what, five ten. He's skinny too. You guys do not know how skinny this dude is. I mean, he's little, so it's kind of crazy seeing a guy like that jump that high. People were surprised. It was almost like it was a one man show on the 14th. He put so much into it, like his legs like flipped out. Yeah, head. like it was like he used everything he had. He used all his jumping ability. He used all his arm strength. It was like he used everything on that. You can just kind of tell that he's, he wanted that one to be good, you know? And that's, it shows. When he finished the day, he was a very sick person. I thought I'd have to take him to the hospital. He just put out so much effort. What dedication, what a showman. It's phenomenal. Ziani's 33rd birthday marked an incredible achievement of dunking at such a high level for such a long period of time. For him, it was a time of reflection on a life defined by overcoming obstacles. This guy is so angry. Why you do that? Dunking by 17 years. This guy want to fly. In state, no dunking, they have to put no, no kick the rim. I'm a transgressor, they have to create it some new rules. Like, Kador, like, the things he tells you, I think you shouldn't take for granted. I think, like, you obviously should have to, like, pay for things he says. There's people that make money off the words they tell you on TV. He tells you the best things you could ever hear for free. He's not a rich person at all. He doesn't make a lot of money from what he does, but he tells everybody that he feels like the richest person in the world for everything he's done and can do. No, you know my life is so good. Maybe I have the best body in the world, 33 years old. I mean, I have a lot of problem with the green, green stuff, you know, my green stuff is here. My green stuff is here, okay. you know, the grass. And uh, I'm the most rich in the world. Nobody believe on me. I don't care because one day you will see.
met him in real life and he does the same stuff in real life at age 33. I was like, man, I was amazed because like he's 33 years old. There's no age. Everybody thinks that like, you know, you're the most athletic when you're 18 or 21 because we're just proving that if you work hard enough, there is no limit. You know, you can keep going. One day you could be like the nastiest 80 year old dunker ever or something. He has a message for dunking that you have all this power. You can concentrate it, focus it, and achieve something rather than releasing it randomly, violence and whatever. It's almost like he's trying to tell us that I'm just an ordinary person and anybody can uh, do what I do. Definitely he gives off like you can be as good if not better than him. <clears throat> I don't care how natural hops you have. You being natural and someone working twice as harder than you, they're going to be a better dunker. I don't care. He's learned a lot about life. And then he puts that in his dunk. He takes every opportunity to make himself a better dunk. If he taught me anything, it's that, like, it's not going to come easy. Honestly, I did learn a lot from him. He told me fear is not the limit. Like, just keep going. And the thing that's amazing about Kadoor is you look at his circumstances he had to go, like, over in France he has to go through. It's, like, amazing that he came from over there. It's kind of like, how'd he make it? You know, he came from nothing, and he made himself something. That's amazing to me, that he can do that at the best age. All these factors against him, you know, he's short. He, I mean, it's just amazing that he can do all that stuff. And that, I mean, honestly, when you look at it in that way, that makes it the whole situation just like even better.